what is up guys so today I'm gonna to be doing a tier list video today and I'm gonna be ranking all 27 Pixar movies currently released since the new one elemental just been released and let's just say it wasn't doing very well in the box office at first but then somehow oh in July it's kind of made like a huge comeback like it ain't, do, it ain't doing too bad but this gave me a chance to go back and rank all of these other Pixar movies as well. Now Pixar is a really great animation studio in my opinion because they make so, some, some of the most greatest animated movies of all time. That Some of them are considered cult classics. And yeah, they've made a lot of not so good movies, but who cares. Anyways, it's time to rank all these movies. So... I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do these. I'm gonna rank these in like tier order. So here are the here are the tiers, by the way. Just so you know. So we have the best of the ball, which means it's the best Pixar movie. Straight up amazing. Like it's 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 an amazing movie. It's pretty good. It's not like it's not it's not the best, but it's good. Then we have it's all right. It's it's decent. Then we have the worst of the ball, which you already know what that is. So starting with the worst of them all, I'm gonna. I'm going to start off with Cars 2. Now this is probably one of the worst sequels ever made, in my opinion. Because, first off, I don't understand why Cars 2, for some reason, is about, it's like a spy movie. Instead of being like a racing movie, just like Cars, just like the first Cars movie was. And literally, making Mater, like, the main character of this movie... Who, who even thought that was a good idea? That was clearly a terrible idea. I mean, I never, to be honest with you, Mater has literally been my favorite character in the Cars franchise. I just find him very annoying. But in the first movie, yeah, sure, he was pretty dumb and childish, but his annoyingness was not that bad. But that is, that is unless you don't make a whole movie about him. A one hour and 42 minute movie about him. Yeah. This is by far the worst sequel ever made. Like, the Cars just, just feels like a DVD sequel, in my opinion, that does not even feel like a theatrical Pixar movie or a theatrical sequel at all. Yeah. Honestly, Cars 2 is just such an awful movie. I never, ever want to watch it again, which I, probably, which I probably will end up doing eventually. But, yeah. Okay, the next worst... So, the next worst of them all is, is going to go to Brave. Now, to be honest with you, I wouldn't really describe Brave as the worst Pixar movie, but it's the worst Disney princess movie in my opinion. Because, like, out of all the Disney princesses, Brave is just such, like, the, the most weakest one. Like, it's and very unlikable. Like, if I did a tier list of all the, of all the Disney princesses, she would be in D tier, along with, like, Elsa or something like that, I don't really know. But Brave is just kind of more of more, the more boring, forgettable, forgettable movies I've seen. Like, the whole part of the film was just that basically Merida's mom basically, like, turned into a bear, and so she, like, tries to, like, turn her back. I mean, okay. That's kind of random and dumb, but... Okay. Yeah, just don't bother watching this film. Okay, next up we have is the other, another worst terrible film, The Good Dinosaur. Yeah, The Good Dinosaur sucked, honestly. Like, it's one of, now this is one of the more forgettable films I've ever watched in my life. Like, I don't know why people would even like this movie. It's just so forgettable. Like, cause for, cause because the, to start it off, like, it isn't fully bad. Like, the only good thing I like about this movie is, the, is, like, is, is like the landscapes. They look so good. But, but, but that's it. That's the only thing I liked about this movie. Nothing else. But, like, Arlo is a very mid-protagonist. You know, this movie is just so worthless. I, 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 I don't know why people should have to watch this film. It's just worthless. Just, just don't watch it. Just don't watch this. If you want to watch any, if, you, if there's any dinosaur movie you want to watch, just watch Jurassic Park. That's a better film to watch. Okay, next up we have is Lightyear. Yeah, Lightyear kind of sucked. It's just that this movie could have just... That, like this movie could have just done so much more. I feel like this film is just so bland, forgettable, and just like th like this movie makes us so unlikable as it was in the Toy Story movies. 
And this film is not very memorable, and like the new characters that are in it are just, yeah, they're just not really that interesting. I find them very boring. This movie just has so much like waste, waste of potential in my opinion. And the one thing I truly hate about the movie is the villain, like because the villain is basically just like him, Buzz himself, but from the future, and a bad guy apparently. Well, gee, that's kind of boring. Overall, this film is just not good. Just, just don't bother watching this movie. It just sucked. Okay, now that's the now these are the worst Pixar movies. Now let's do the it's all right, the mediocre ones. Starting off on the back, we have Cars. Cars sort of exists. You know, Cars. I can't deny it is the black sheep of Pixar. And because most of the fact, but just because it's the weakest Pixar movie, like not on par with them, like Toy Story or The Incredibles, it does not mean it is a complete failure. But it really isn't much of a masterpiece, honestly. But for me, the first Cars movie is a decent enough movie. Like, it's not Pixar's best movie, but it certainly isn't their worst either. This film is very mediocre. Like, the story is fine. Like, the racing scenes are also good, I guess. And McQueen, as a protagonist, he's fine. And, like, pretty much, like, Doc Hutt's backstory is pretty sad. It kind of works. And this, and the way, and when Sally explains, like, the backstory of Radiator Springs, how it got abandoned, I guess I realized that this is a Pixar movie that I am watching. But besides that, though, I do agree that there are some flaws with it, like, because, like, half of the runtime of this movie is just in Hillbill with, like, really unnecessary side characters. I don't like Mater. For some reason, like I mentioned earlier, Mater is, a, for me, is the worst character in this whole franchise. I just find him unlikable, annoying. Like, he has at least one or so good lines in this film, but really, he's just not really, he's not really my favorite character in this franchise. But hey, you know what? This movie has at least some good elements that I like. The story actually kind of kind of works, and Chick Kicks the villain. You know what? He's actually pretty solid. I definitely, I definitely love his catchphrase, Kachiga. But yeah, this is a fine movie. Okay, next up we have is Onward. Onward sort of exists. Like, I never really knew anything about Onward, Onward before watching it, but now that I've seen it, eh, meh. Again, another mediocre Pixar movie that is not fully awful, but it is just kind of mediocre, but really not the best movie I've seen. I'm gonna put it in the It's Alright tier. But yeah. Okay, next up, next movie we have is gonna be... Uh... Oh yeah, Finding Dory. Okay, now you know where do I even start with this movie? I I, you know, I honestly just don't know what to think about Finding Dory because it's one of those movies I find very meh. But it's nowhere near as good as Finding Nemo, though. I mean, it's fine. But I will say though, I I do think it is kind of not fully better than Finding Nemo, but there are just some things that do make it a, a bit better. Like the animation and the fact that there are more land scenes in this movie, they weren't just, I mean, it, like, it wasn't just all like in the sea, all, all that stuff. And Dory's back, Dory's parents' backstory is actually pretty interesting as well. But there's not really much to talk about here, it's just kind of okay. Okay, then we have The Incredibles. Yeah, this honestly is a very mid sequel. I mean, it's not really that, it's not really that bad, to be honest with you, but, like, going off the bat, it is not really much of a great, of a great sequel, and nowhere near as good as the first one, because the story is just kind of the same as the first, and, and the twist villain is just weak and unlikable, and, like, The Incredibles 2 is basically just, like, the for Incredibles 1 again, except a few changes, like, there's no, like, there's no actual difference, like, if you were if you were to compare these movies, nothing changes. The story is the same, has the, has the same el like. The point is, The Incredibles two is literally not even much of a sequel to me. I just think that it's literally just The Incredibles one again, 
literally like everything like Incredibles 2 it feels like it just copy pasted everything from the first movie that's why it's just, I just couldn't find it that interesting okay then we have his Monsters University which is the prequel to Monsters Inc now this movie has kind of kind of feels weird to me because on one hand I think it's just kind of underrated two I thought is mediocre and three it's not that great but overall, Monsters University, as a for you know, for a prequel, I'll admit it was actually okay. I mean, I think that it was nice to tell the story how Mike and Sully met and the adventure in like college. But I guess it was all right to see. Overall, I think this movie has kind of like Monsters University is a mixed bag because there are some elements I do like, some are fine, and yeah, there are some nitpicks. Like the villain who, who I who I really don't know what her name was, but like, she basically just excludes them from like university or something like that. That's all she really did. She didn't really. She's not much of a good villain to be honest with you. But you know what? This film was actually okay. As a prequel, I would definitely rewatch it sometime. I guess. Okay. Next up, we have is Cars Free. Now, in my opinion, Cars Free, in my opinion, is the best one. I mean, look, it's still not, it's not like that good, but at least Pixar tried to do something with this movie. It actually made it more work, unlike the, unlike the, unlike the first two movies. To start off, I think that the tone of the movie feels more mature, and definitely fix, and, and definitely, and definitely the animation is gorgeous, and McQueen's character in this movie is a lot more handled well as it was in the first one. And for me, this literally made, this, for me, this definitely feels like the real Cars 2, in my opinion. Because it's about racing, not about spies. Cool. But yeah, but I mean, yeah, Cars Free, despite being the best one, I still think it's not perfect. It's got some few flaws, it's kind of stupid and dumb. Like, the villain is, like, like the villain, he basically just chick kicks again. Except he's boring. Like you, like you can never ever be the Kachiga. Like Jackson Storm just doesn't even feel like much of a villain to be honest with you. Like bro, look, bro, like bro, look, just doing his job. That's it. He's not really much of a, a villain after all. The only evil thing he truly did was just like you know, bone cruise into a wall. That's all he did. But overall, I think Cars Free is my favorite because a, the tone of the movie feels more mature. The animation is gorgeous, and I think the idea of a queen's racing career coming to an end works, and that's what Cars 2 really should have been about. But yeah, I think it's definitely my favorite one in the trilogy, and more rewatchable as well, to be honest with you. Okay, next up we have is uh, A Bug's Life. Now, I honestly knew nothing about bu A Bug's Life before watching it, but... Now that I've seen it, yeah, I think I think it's a decent enough movie. It's basically kind of like Cars, where it isn't. It's a decent movie. It's not like Pixar's best movie, but it's not their worst either. It's fine. But like, I think that the characters were okay. The story is decent. The villain is also okay. But but the fact that he had the most darkest death ever, like birds got eaten by li by literally birds, like. Oh, holy shit, that, that, like, that's a dark death, not gonna lie. That, that was a Trump tie a lot of kids back in the day, huh? But yeah, I think A Bug's Life is an okay movie. Like, it's literally like, kind of on par with Cars, where it's they're both mediocre movies. And, and yeah. Okay, next up we have is... Have is Elemental. Now, Elemental is kind of felt like a strange movie as well. Because, on one hand, I think this movie is good, okay, and honestly, kind of flaw, flaw, and kind of has some flaws. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure we all, like, when we all saw this, the trailer for this movie, we all thought it looked generic. But when the movie came out, it actually was pretty okay, honestly. I mean, I thought it was good. The animation is stellar. And, the, and Wade and Ember... Oh, oh yeah, that's the names. Okay, um, I think they're a great couple overall. 
I mean, this film actually wasn't that bad, I guess. It's pretty rewatchable. Okay, next up we have is Turning Red. Turning Red kind of exists. To be honest with y'all, I don't. I, I honestly just don't. You know, with some of these movies, there's not really much I can say about them, because one, they're just they're just good. They're just and some of them are just okay, and some are terrible. That's why I I, I can't really say that much about it. And same with Turning Red, I can't really say much about it. I mean, I thought it was fine, I guess. But I will say, though, the animation is kind of just a bit different. It's kind of better. It's kind of actually really good. It's definitely a huge step up from, like, modern Pixar animation. And yeah, overall, I thought it was okay. Like, songs are, are enjoyable. And the main characters, the characters in the film were just fine. I, I didn't really get annoyed. This is kind of just okay, at best. So yeah. It's going in the It's Alright tier. Okay, next up we have is Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4 shouldn't really exist, but it does. Yeah, Toy Story 4 is my least favorite out of all the Toy Story movies. Like, not only is it an unnecessary sequel to a franchise that really should have just ended in 2010, but, like, everything about it just kind of makes it this kind of makes me, like, everything about it just makes it feel unlikable and just kind of unenjoyable. Start off, Woody is kind of a weak, is kind of a mid-protagonist and just kind of, it just, he's just kind of weak and, like, he really just feels like an idiot in this movie. Like, and also, 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 you know Bonnie? Yeah, guess what, re re like, re like, remember in the third movie where... In the end, Annie prom promised Bonnie that she would that she would take care of Woody no matter what. Well, guess what? How about we just fuck that plot? Because clearly, in Toy Story 4, Bonnie literally creates a spork. Yes, the spork. Who basically tries to commit suicide half the movie for some reason. I don't know why he does that, but... Okay. But, like, the only way I can, I can describe Toy Story 4 as an unnecessary sequel. That's all I can say. Because I think that it's really just, I honestly just don't think Toy Story, Toy Story 4 just doesn't really stand out with me. But I will say though, the film doesn't really suck entirely. I think that the animation is gorgeous and stellar. But that's it really. This film really just didn't do it for me. It's just a bit overrated. Okay, now that, now that we've done the mediocre ones, let's do the good ones. Now let's do the pretty good ones now. So for the pretty good one, for the pretty good tier, I'm going to go with Luca. Luca, I think, is a simple slice of life movie. Like, the animation is kind, is overall really on a new level. And, and like, some of the characters, like Luca and Alberto, are pretty fun characters as well. And, I like, and also, also, like, the villain in the movie, who is Ercola, I like the fact that it's not, I like the fact that it's not really, like, a twist villain. They literally just introduced him straight away, and overall, I just, I think it's just a, I think it's a, I think he is a solid villain, overall, yeah, this movie was fun to watch, honestly, I, I honestly rewatched this movie a lot more as well, so yeah, okay, n okay, next up, okay, now, thinking, what movie should I do next, um, I think, you know what, I think we'll do the straight up amazing tier now, because, now this is where it gets it. Now this is where it gets good. All right. So for the straight up, for the straight up amazing tier, I'm gonna start off with Toy Story One. Now the OG Toy Story movie is a classic, which kind of makes sense considering it was the first ever 3D animated movie to be released in theaters. And overall, rewatching it so many years later, it's a classic and really a movie that I enjoy watching no matter what. Like the animation is actually tolerable, considering the time, considering it was 1995 standards, and Woody and Buzz are also really fun protagonists, and Woody's character development in this movie as well is great, and all, all the other characters are really fun and enjoyable. Overall, I think this movie is great. Okay, it is great. Okay, next up we have is um, up. 
Now this is another one, another movie I thought was really good as well. Like the first fifty minutes, like the first fifty mi fifty minutes, people just say that it's the most best part of the movie and the most saddest as well, in my opinion. But like overall, I think Up is a movie that I find is very emotional, but yet still tries to be still very, a very enjoyable and really amazing movie overall. And yeah, you know what? It is simply for me. A Pixar masterpiece. Okay, next up we have is Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo is one of those movies that, I mean, is one of ten out of one of Pixar's most best movies ever made. And yet, you know, it can't go wrong. Seriously, Finding Nemo is just that movie that's really good overall. Like, how can you not, how can you not like this movie? Seriously, Finding Nemo is a classic. And I suppose we watch the game many years later. I definitely enjoy it. Considering I've been watching it ever since I was like a little kid. This movie holds up. Okay. Next up we have is Coco. You know what? Coco. Oh my god. You know. Coco for me is such an amazing movie. Like everything about it is so amazing. Amazing. The music. The emotion. And the animation. The characters, everything about this movie is perfect, legitimately perfect. But like, I don't know if I should put it in like the best of them all, the best of them all, or in straight up amazing. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in straight, up, straight, up ama straight up amazing. Also, the thing I like about this movie is the, is the twist villain, Ernesto de la Cruz. I think that's probably one of the best twist villains I've ever seen. Like literally, he just works. Okay, um, next up we have this Inside Out. Actually, you know what, I think, I think, okay, now we are now about to do the, the last tier, aka the bottom tier, the best of them all, because this is where, this is where the good part comes in. Okay, so first up we have is Inside Out. Inside Out is simply, for me, one of the greatest Pixar movies ever made, because like, I think it has a very cr creative idea of, like, emotions out of people's heads. I think that's a really great concept. And it's, it's just really emotional. and has so much emotional moments. But, like, like I said earlier, even though it has very emotional moments, it still tries its best to be simply... A, to try to be a Pixar movie that we can all enjoy. Definitely the best of them all. Okay, next up we have a soul... Soul, for some reason, is just, for, for me, one of the greatest Pixar movies ever made. Like, first off, the animation is honestly a huge step up to Pixar's modern 3D. Like, Soul is just like a huge step up from, like, Pixar's modern 3D animation. And the music is just so good. Like, this is honestly one of the more mature Pixar movies I have seen as well. Like, literally, everything about this film is perfect. Okay. Next up, I'm going with Toy Story 3. Now, in my opinion, Toy Story 3 should have really been the ending to the Toy Story franchise. Because in the, because the ending shows Andy giving his toys away to Bonnie and going off to college. That is the most genius ending of Toy Story 3. And honestly, Toy Story 3 is kind of a huge step up from like the first two movies, in my opinion. Because it's more deeper, more emotional -er. And overall, I still love it. I think this is honestly a movie that I enjoy all the way. Okay. Now, okay, now, next up, I'm going with Wally. -E. You know what? Wally -E is a masterpiece. Like, that's all I can say. It is simply one of the best Pixar movies ever made. That's honestly that's only one way I can describe this movie. Like, I don't know what makes it so good. It's it's just really good. It's just like one of the best Pixar movies ever made. Like Wally and Eve, like these two main characters are just so cute. Like like the way they interact and the, the, their chemistry and their interactions in this movie is perfect. And overall, simply, you know, I feel like 
Wally was one of the best movies in the golden age of Pixar. Literally. I consider Wally a Pixar classic. Okay. Next up we have is Monsters Inc. Okay, you know what? Yeah. You already know this is definitely going in the best of the all tier. Seriously. Monsters Inc. is a classic. And like I mean why would why 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 wouldn't you not put this movie in 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 S tier? Seriously. Like I can't imagine you would do you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. That, that would be very unrealistic. Overall, Monsters Inc. is a Pixar classic that will, that will forever hold a very special place in our hearts. Okay, next up we have is now we're we are now entering the top three. First up we have is Ratatouille. Now the story of Ratatouille is kind of simple to understand. It's a rare who wants to cook. Now I know that sounds kind of basic, but at the same time though, it's perfect. Simply, Ratatouille is one of the best Pixar movies ever made. Like the animation is still is amazing, and and like Remy and all the characters are great, and the story is perfect. Everything about this film is perfect. Everything, literally, all the way from start to finish. I love it so much. Okay, next up we have is The Incredibles. Oh, oh boy. Now, The Incredibles is my favorite Pixar movie of all time. Which kind of makes sense, considering I've been watching it since I was, uh, I was like a little kid, like when I was like 6 or 7 years old. I loved it. And even watching it many years later, I still think it holds up. Like, literally. Everything about The Incredibles is amazing. Like... The story, the characters, the animation, literally, probably one, of the, probably one of Pixar's best movies of the golden age. But, you're probably asking me, why is it not number one, you ask? Well, because number one is Toy Story 2. Now, Toy Story 2 is one of the best sequels ever made, because it is definitely a huge improvement of Toy Story 1. And overall, it literally perfectly, what well, it, it pretty much makes, it pretty much take, makes, takes what, like Toy Story 2 takes what Toy Story, what made Toy Story 1 great into a masterpiece, simply. Like, the new characters in this movie they introduce are also really fun and enjoyable, and, and, and the animation is definitely a huge improvement of this movie, and overall, simply, the best sequel to ever exist. <sighs> okay. Well, that's it, guys. We did it. This was... This is my Pixar movie tier list. Now, Pixar, despite having their, having their flawed movies, I still think they're the golden age of animated movies, and pretty much watching all, all their movies, it made me realize now why I love animated movies so much. Overall... Pixar is quite a hit or miss studio. You know what? Pixar will forever remain to me the best animation, the best animation studio of all time. Well, guys, I guess that's it, guys. I'm pretty much finished. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.